So welcome back to Not Kill for the lightweights this time. And we've got the grid in front of us. We've got Sherlaw, Donald and Weaving. Keep your eyes on Craig Sherlaw, a very famous name in Scottish uh, motorcycle racing. And Mackenzie, Rollo and Robinson. Tara Mackenzie back up once again on his Moto3 bike. Uh, and another Moto3 bike out there as well, Jordan Weaving. Dennis, British Championship runners all the way through the field in every class today. Yeah, for sure. A mixture of bikes. We've got Super Twins, Mini Twins, you've got the 400s, you've got the 125s, like Moto3 bikes, a wide, wide mix of stuff. Uh, make it quite uh, difficult, I suppose, at times. Even, even post-classic seniors out there and uh, Andrew's on his uh, 1100. But we'll see how these guys get on. And we are on the starter's grid. The green flag waved at the back. Such is the grid. He has to jump up and down. Keep your eyes on that bridge. The lights facing us just now. There's two lights on this side of it. And away they go. Grid lights go out. And we are all heading down towards seat curves. Lots of his vests at the back there, which is yeah, good to see. Yeah, the back. Look at the guy at the inside there. Joe Irvin, one of the guys that was won the race yesterday on the Saturday. Look at all the inside there. Oh, oh down he goes. Joe Irvin goes down and he wipes out Mark Boren with him. Whoa, big accident there. Boren's bike runs across the bottom of the road. Thank Thankfully nobody hits him. Mark will have absolutely no idea what happened there. And dearie me, Dennis, that was an absolute crazy manoeuvre. I was just spying the, the sheets there and uh, just obviously got uh, carried away from being at the back of the grid and, and trying to come through there. And unfortunately, he's gone down. Red lights have gone out, Duncan, which you would yeah. expect there. And I was glad to see Matt Boren up to his feet there straight away. One of the guys in obvious space. And look at this on board footage. Yep. Oh, dear, oh, dear. And that's a big, that's a big off for Matt Boren there. That's a big high seat. Watch this. The bike comes in. It hits the back wheel. So it goes <laughs> sideways and he gets flicked right up and over. And, oh, that's going to knock the window. How lucky again. was Tom Robinson as well? Well, that's not often Tom is lucky off a start, really, is it? <laughs> Well, let's get the restart underway straight away. We gather our breath in the commentary box here, and that was an absolute frantic first start. The red lights are on the bridge, and away we go, down towards St. Curves. David McNair right at the back of the grid, but this time, as we head in towards the first corner for the first team of Askin, cutting across the front is Craig Sherlaw, who leads. Thankfully, there are no madmen entering the corner on the apex out of control. Yeah, for sure, Graham Bedell. Looking back at Tom Robinson there, and Tom Robinson's got a half reasonable start there at the front, but it is Sherlaw leading the way from Donald at the moment, then Jordan waving right behind, and then we've got young Tara McKenzie, Lewis Rollo right behind them as well. So, three different types, well, four different types of bikes there. You've got Super Twin, Mini Twin, Moto Free Bike, and a 125 all in the top five there at the moment. So, why mix of stuff going on? And uh, I'm sure this one's going to go right the way through down to the wire. The, the guy that's been looking impressive, Duncan, you mentioned before there, Craig Sherlaw. And he's looking really smooth and fast out there. And you've got to say it's putting Gavin Donald under pressure. He's looking yep. on the brakes and the happen. You see Craig Sherlaw comes from the, the Sherlaw Racing, you could call it family or dynasty in Aberdeen. Craig does a lot of road racing over an island and a very, very quick man. We've not seen him too much here, not kill. And it really is great to see the Sherlaw name, not just back on the bike as a sticker, but back on the bike as an actual rider as he goes through the top of seat curves. But we need to jump back also, Dennis, I believe, to the very first start there because Joe Irvin, yeah, I'm seeing a madman there, but Joe Irvin is a very, very class rider. That is quite out of character for Joe Irvin, what happened there. Yeah, for sure. We've probably got caught up with the speed of the guys compared to what he's used to going towards the, the top of the, the seat curve there because normally he's a guy that's at the front and challenging for wins in, in the British Championship and uh, just one of those things. And you can see he tried to go up the inside and as soon as he hit the curve, lost the front. And I think uh, just very unfortunate for Matt Boren in the wrong place at the wrong time because he's been riding so well this weekend. He had his best result yesterday that we've seen in a long time and uh, looking very impressive as we again watch Gavin Donald have a look at Sherlock on the brakes and the hairpin. Yep, and Gavin Donald has got it done this time. He's got past Craig Sherlock. So Gavin Donald from Craig Sherlock. Then we have got Jordan Weaving in third place and Tara McKenzie on the orange bike in fourth. But who is this coming up the inside? It's Teasdale. It could only be Lee Teasdale. And uh, yeah, I kind of drew, drew breath there in a minute. He was coming from a long way back there, and we've kind of missed Lee Teasdale on this one. Let's look at Paul McCartney there, one of the guys on the GP125 bike that uh, seems to be getting better and better all the time. He's down at the 58 second bracket, which I think means he's going to go and do the British Championship here next weekend. The, the British suit bikes here on the 14th to the 16th of June, so these guys are looking equally impressive out there. Donald Hendry, the next man to come under the cosh from the flying Lee Teasdale on his WK650 Super Twin as he goes down and over the first curb off the Arnold Clark chicane. But Teasdale, a man on a mission in any class you put him on, he really is just a class class rider. Yeah, for sure. I, I, I'm impressed so far with obviously the guys at the front on the, on the Super Twins, uh, Duncan Mini Twins, but also you've got to look at Jordan Weaving there. He's doing a great job in fending off uh, young Tara McKenzie and uh, looking pretty comfortable whilst he's doing that kind of pace. Grant Reed as well. Grant Reed quite out of sorts today, isn't he? Teasdale goes round the outside of somebody else, and Grant Reed is the next man ahead up the road. So uh, Grant Reed, we would expect him to be. 
Almost right at the very front, but he's leading the 400. Yeah, well, Grant Reed actually won the races yesterday, Duncan, for the for the 400. So he actually uh, got the better of Tom Robinson. Uh, but it looks like uh, so far in this one that Tom Robinson, yeah, Tom. because he got a better start, a nice clean start for Tom Robinson, he's managed to catapult that and keep that momentum going. There's a watch of the guys through the chicane there. Gavin Donald at the front, ahead of Craig Shaw this time, and Jordan Weaving a close watch in uh, third place. Yeah, the little Moto3 bike sounds absolutely gorgeous, doesn't it? The, the Moto3 of, of Jordan Weaving, the KTM, exactly the same bike as you can see in fourth place to Tara McKenzie coming towards you. But when you look at these bikes in the paddock, they're just absolutely gorgeous. They're Grand Prix machines, Dennis. You don't, there's just nothing, you know, normal about them. They're absolutely factory, you should say. Yeah, well, you could probably say that those two bikes there in third and fourth place don't can probably equal to the value of the rest of the bikes yeah. on the grid, which is a scary thought, but that, that's probably the truth of the matter. Yeah, absolutely. And Joe Irvin just put his one down the road. <laughs> the see it comes. But Sherlock back into the lead. Greg Sherlock takes the lead as he goes through there. And you've got to think that Weaving's thinking about it. He goes up the inside. It's a good controlled manoeuvre. He's passed by the time they get to the apex. Oh, Gavin Donald. Gavin Donald squeezed that. He tapped on a little bit too much trying to get back there. It looked like Gavin Donald was trying to hold the bike tight. Maybe he's thinking he was going to get back up the inside in towards Butchers. And as he was trying to hold it tight, that's causing the rear to slide out on him. And if he had just used a little bit more of the curb and run wide level with Weaving, that probably wouldn't have happened. He'd have been right in the back wheel. But he lost a bit of momentum, but very fast through Clark's there. And he's already chasing down towards the back wheel and again is what Sherlock down the happen and Craig Sherlock looking very very impressive and uh, Duncan won the races yesterday he was leading it right the way through to the last lap last corner and got mugged and ended up crossing line in third place and I'm pretty sure he won't want to see that happening again but he's also a man that's doubling up on track time he's out on the suit bike so that's going to be hard work for him riding the suit bike and he's going to get on this and he's going to feel like he's standing still out there yeah do you think that Jordan Weaven's almost had enough of this I don't want to hang about with these guys now I want to get to the front but he, he's just been mugged on straight line speed the super twin of Gavin Donald here uh, just got him but look at that back up the end Inside, nice and smooth. It's, there's no no rush about that. Is there nothing rushed? It's controlled. He gets to the apex. Well, yeah, fires you, you, out the corner. You hit the nail on the head there. It's all smooth and controlled. Oh, Sorry, Dennis. Close. That made me really draw breath there. And that was the Am there. He was there, just getting caught up the wrong place on the track there just as I went through the uh, Arnold clutch again. And again, look, that's made the first four all close up there because Tyron McKenzie was right in the back of that lot. Through the first corner, Dougie Brown there. We've not seen enough of Dougie Brown. He's got David McNairn homing in, which is always a fighting thought as McNairn goes up the inside. Brown tries to defend. They make Scotsman extremely tight for each other, but thankfully they get through there. There's no shenanigans on and no contact. And, and David McNairn, one of the guys we should really talk about, probably one of the fittest guys in the paddock. You would think, oh, yeah. was it five times? Don't argue with him. Taekwondo champion for, in Scotland, but also twice British champion. And uh, I was equally well, very impressed when I found out information of uh, David McNairn there. One of the guys, and uh, see, obviously, we're really getting a fight with him. <laughs> Oh, look at Weaving, surely not there. That's a gallus, gallus attempt there. Weaving tries to go through on the inside of Leslie's, but it wasn't to be. Uh, the good thing, he's he probably doing this this weekend now. He'll, he knows that that won't work next weekend. <laughs> he won't be trying that again. Yeah, like Joe Irving knows that that won't work as well. <laughs> First corner, but look at Donald. Donald, they're back into traffic now, so it's all happening. Tara McKenzie has managed to get himself onto the back of the train as well as they go up the inside. I think that was Natasha Moss they were passing there as they come through and on their way towards the hip and the front four all now tied together, Sherlaw, Donald, Weaving and McKenzie. Look at Weaving going up the inside, Jordan even thinking about it, but they're not doing anything silly, these boys. They don't want any damage, do they, Dennis? It's a week until the British Superbikes here. Gavin Donald gets on the gas a little bit aggressively there. Yeah, for sure. Obviously, they don't want to do anything uh, silly, but I was just going to say that, look at the difference between Craig Sherlaw and Gavin Donald on the bike. Craig Sherlaw has tucked in a lot more than I would say Gavin Donald looks like he rides with his head up. Whereas Craig Shaw has tucked in trying to get every ounce of speed out there. And probably that's probably with the road racing, because straight line speed, especially when the nights are the northwest and places like that, the more speed they can get, obviously the better for these guys. Yeah, very much a, a kind of 250 Grand Prix style that Craig Shaw has shown us here on his bike as he comes through the Arnold Clark chicane and up the back street. The ER6 Kawasaki that Craig Shaw's on. Beautifully prepared bike when you see it up close. One of the one of the fanciest exhaust systems I've ever seen in my life on it, Dennis. I'm just watching him close up to some more uh, slow rides as chase down towards the happen again. And this could make it interesting to get down towards the critical point of the race there. Rod the Walker there, 118 there, you can see yep. he's in the shot. Paul McCartney about to get done as well as the leaders come past him. Go oh, Gavin Donald does a massive high side, Dennis. That was an absolute egg beat, as you call it. The last lap as well. The checker flag is out. The race is over for Gavin Donald. Craig Sherlaw wins the race, but that was a big high side, and he was lucky. And, and John Wayne had to roll off there. Yeah. Tyler McKenzie came through to get second. He was lucky that nobody else collected him there. The photographers and the marshals all on inside. So Craig Sherlaw takes the spoils of victory. But oh, what a way to end the race. Gavin Donald. Yeah, glad to see he was up on his feet there, Duncan. Absolutely. So Craig Sherlaw wins from Tara McKenzie. 
McKenzie. McKenzie gets lucky at the last corner as Weaving has to lift off. Lewis Rollo, Lee Teasdale, Adrian McCarthy, Tom Robinson and Grant Reid round out the top eight. Let's hand down to Joe Tanner. Greg, yet another win. It was a little bit tighter this time and there was a bit of carnage behind you as well. Ah, yeah, Gavin definitely kept me an honest race there. Uh, as soon as he passed me, it sort of spurred me on to get back by him. Um, I think he helped me out with a bit of my braking lines and braking markers, but as soon as I picked them up, I managed to sort of pass him coming into the top corner there and just got my head down and pulled away. It's nice to see a race out of it, though, rather than just domination. Ah, yeah, no, that's, that's what I prefer. I prefer to have a bit of a closer race rather than just being sort of either out of the front or mid-pack with nobody. It's, it's more fun, definitely. It could have been a win for you, um, then a big sort of incident at the hairpin there, and you've ended up third, so uh, an up-and-down ending to the race. Yeah, I'd say it was a good race again. Um, hope that guy's OK. Um, he got up and, and limped off, but it was, a, it was a big big high side. Yeah, that, that was quite big. I'm glad I avoided it, but it was close. Um, then Taz took advantage of me and got me to the line, so yeah, it was a good race, and thank you to get a good position again. Taz, we didn't see you here yesterday. The day started difficult because you had to start off the back, but yeah. already a good second place. Yeah, um, started from the back of the grid in the first race and then just uh, got fourth in that first race from the back and then got to start from fourth in that race, which helped a lot. Um, and I just think that the high side helped as well, didn't oh. it? You were perfectly yeah. positioned to take advantage. I was quite lucky. I seen um, Gavin had a couple of moments in the, the race and I was, I was happy with my distance that I was behind him and then um, he got in front of Jordan and then um, he had a big high side, but I hope he's okay. And yeah, he limped off. He looks like he was all right. Yeah, he was massive. I've never seen someone go so high in the air, but uh, yeah, looking forward to the next race and see how that goes. So let's just watch Gavin Donald get on the gas and flicked over the handlebars and land right on the back of his head and his back and his bum there, Dennis. That's everything that hurts. Yeah, I know that uh, Taz said it was massive, but he actually held on to the bars right the way <laughs> over the top until he was going back down. Jordan, even looking back. Yeah, yeah. You can see him on his head, but thankfully, okay. Thank <laughs> you.